Lecture 3.4, Velocity, Speed, and Rates of Change. This is Locomotive 278 on permanent display on an old bridge over the Gunnison River in Colorado. The locomotive used to run on the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad. If you look closely, you can tell that it's no longer operating because there's a big hole in the cylinder. Consider a graph of displacement, distance traveled versus time. Average velocity can be found by taking change in position over change in time, or delta S over delta T. We write V average equals delta S over delta T equals F of T plus delta T minus F of T over delta T. The speedometer in your car does not measure average velocity, but instantaneous velocity, the velocity at one moment in time. V of t equals ds dt equals the limit as delta t goes to zero of f of t plus delta t minus f of t over delta t. Velocity is the first derivative of position. Example, the free fall equation s equals one-half g t squared, where s is position. Commonly used gravitational constants are g equals 32 feet per second squared in the United States, and for the rest of the world, g equals 9.8 meters per second squared, or g equals 980 centimeters per second squared. S equals one half times 32 t squared would give us S equals 16 t squared. That's if we use 32 as the gravitational constant. Velocity then is ds dt or 32 t. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity. A equals dv dt, that is the derivative of velocity, or d squared s dt squared, that is the second derivative of position. Example, if v equals 32t, acceleration is 32. If the distance is in feet, velocity would be in feet per second. Acceleration would be in feet per second per second or feet per second squared. It is important to understand the relationship between a position graph, velocity, and acceleration. Here we have a position graph with time on the horizontal axis and distance on the vertical axis. And we'll look at each section. In the first section, acceleration is positive, velocity is positive, and increasing. We can tell that acceleration is positive because the position graph is concave upward, and the velocity is positive because the slope is positive. In the next section, which is a straight line, acceleration is zero, velocity is positive and constant. 
Here the acceleration is negative. Notice that the graph is concave down. Velocity is positive, that is the slope is still positive, but decreasing. Right at the top the slope is zero, so the velocity is zero. Here the acceleration is negative. As you see the graph is concave down. Velocity is negative and decreasing. In this section, the acceleration is zero, the velocity is negative, you see the slope is negative, and constant. Here the acceleration is positive, the graph is concave up again, but the slope is still negative, so the velocity is negative, but increasing. And finally, the acceleration is zero, and the velocity is zero here. Rates of change. Average rate of change equals f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Instantaneous rate of change equals f prime x, or the limit as h goes to zero, of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. These definitions are true for any function x does not have to represent time. Example 1. For a circle, a equals pi r squared. da dr equals d dr pi r squared. That is, we took the derivative of both sides with respect to r. da dr equals 2 pi r which gives us the instantaneous rate of change of the area with respect to the radius. We can multiply both sides by dr. This is one of those times when it's convenient to think of dA dr as a division. So we get dA equals 2 pi r dr. For tree ring growth, if the change in area is constant, then dr must get smaller as r gets larger. And in this equation, we can think of dA as a small change in A, and dr as a small change in r. From economics, the marginal cost is the first derivative of the cost function and represents an approximation of the cost of producing one more unit. Example 13. Suppose it costs cx equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 15x to produce x stoves. So we have the cost function. C prime x equals 3x squared minus 12x plus 15. That first derivative of the cost function would give you the slope of the cost function. If you are currently producing 10 stoves, the 11th stove will cost approximately C prime 10 equals 3 times 10 squared minus 12 times 10 plus 15. Or 300 minus 120 plus 15 or $195. This is called the marginal cost. The actual cost is C11 minus C10. And if we plug the numbers in, we get 770 minus 550, or $220 for the actual cost. Now you might notice but this is not a great approximation. Don't let that bother you. I used to let it bother me. In fact, for the first few years I taught calculus, I didn't include marginal cost, but it turns out it kept showing up on AP exams. Actually, if the numbers are large, then the marginal cost and the actual cost match pretty closely. 
Marginal cost is a linear approximation of a curved function. For large values, it gives a good approximation of the cost of producing the next item.